Okay, okay. Thank you guys for coming back once again to the one and only Akoye Media Podcast. We got a special guest today by the name of Dayton Jones, Swiss Army Knight for the Dallas Cowboys, Green Bay Packers, and beyond. Um, Dayton is also, he, he, he can introduce himself, matter of fact. Dayton, how you doing, man? Oh, I can hear you guys now. It was still a little bit muffled, but man, thank you guys for having me. I'm um, very excited uh, being on the show today, man, and uh, just very excited to talk to the fans, man. You know, I love you guys and love the work that you guys actually put in to actually dissect the film on, on guys and uh, actually unveil the truth. Oh, man. I'm, I'm glad you said that last thing, man, the truth. That's what we're about over yeah. here, man. Like, um, when I got started, well, this ain't really about me, but when we got started, that's all we really wanted to uncover was... You know the truth via film, and that's that's what we live by here, man. So I appreciate you even. Uh, I appreciate you from the beginning. When you when you when you were on Twitter, when we connected on Twitter, you kind of saw that you were like whoever over there is woke, and I and I, and I kind of gravitated to you after that. But uh, I I appreciate everything uh, in regards to you know you recognizing real because real recognize real, man. So I, I all the way because one man. thing, all the way one thing I do know is film does not lie, and. You know? I mean, when when I when I see that someone knows how to dissect film and understand that what's going on with the X's and O's, I'm like, okay, they they know football. They they understand what's actually going on. That's what's up. During the play, you know. So, uh, you know, shouts out to you guys over there, and uh, man, keep it up. Well, we will, man. We will. Um, you 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 are Compton raised, right? You said what is that? You you you're from Compton, right? You were Compton. Oh raised? yeah. So uh, so I'm, I'm I'm from Compton, California, born and raised. Mm. Uh, uh, I lived all throughout Compton and uh, as well, uh, South Central Los Angeles. Uh, and for me, uh, a lot of people really don't know, man. Uh, I, grew, I grew up in Los Angeles, California, lived in Compton, you know, where I was, where I was, you know, where you got, where you get that, that real upbringing. That's where I was actually, you know, brought up, yeah. uh, really raised. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I, I tell people all the time, man, uh, I know so many people from all, so all, and I know so much about LA is because. I lived somewhere new at least twice a year my whole entire lifetime, you know, and uh, and and that wasn't because uh, uh, you know that wasn't by choice. That was more of my my family's circumstance, and and uh, and it made me who I am today as a man. Uh, you real but, good. Uh, you real good at icebreakers and meeting new people, ain't you? Yeah, it, yeah. I'm, I'm really good at that. I'm really I'm really good at meeting people. Uh, stepping into uh, people's lives, and uh, it's just because where where I've been and where my life has taken me, and uh, uh, I'm a guy who's learned by experiences, you know, and and I'm able to dish those experiences back out, That's back out. But uh, I'm from, I'm a Compton guy. Uh, um, I'm 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 born. I mean, I'm, I have five other siblings. Uh, oh wow! I'm one of six, and uh, I'm I'm the second youngest in my family, and I have one older brother. He's the oldest, and I'm I'm the youngest, you know. So. Uh, he a monster Tough like you, family. man. He he big like you, man. Yeah, no, nah, I'm 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 he's he's a short guy, you know. Oh, you the big five, baby. <laughs> you the big baby. My, hey, I'm I I, I I he used to punk me, make me eat all his vegetables and stuff at the dinner table and stuff <laughs> no, like you, that. Oh, you gotta think about it. <laughs> he used to punk me, I used to get hey. He he created a monster, he, he, man. So you gotta thank him like for he, that. He created a monster, you feel me? Yeah. You know, I, yeah, uh, but <laughs> it was very fun. Though. You you hella that, big, you know? man. You hella big, and you're not you're not a fat dude either. You big, fast dude, man. So that's like that. Two eighty six by two eighty and can move. That's that's a scary sight on the field. I know that. All the way, I could definitely put some food away. You know. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. How, how how did your family, other than like moving around, how did you guys manage to stay out of? Because uh, you know uh, we already know Cali is like full of like uh, d different cliques and different gangs and groups stuff like that, right? Oh yeah. So how, how for me, you... man. Uh, Go ahead. For me, man, I, I I take it to me and having a strong mom. I take it to having a strong mom, but on top of that, not just having a strong mom. Uh, it was more. It was more of me having uh, having to live in so many different areas and having to come into so many different people's lives and mm. you know. Uh, so you were I, cool I with, like, with with different sets. Yeah. So it was, you like you yeah, cool on both I, sides I, of the line, I, sort of. I, I used to move. I, I lived in, I lived somewhere new every year of my life until I went to college. So a lot of people don't understand this. Is like everywhere I was moving to was gang infested. There was gang violence. You know, drugs. So. It wasn't like I was moving to Beverly Hills. It wasn't like I was moving close to the beach. It was, I was, we were moving into the, somewhere new into the trenches every year. So oh, it was wow. like, I couldn't, I couldn't get familiar with these gangs. I couldn't, I couldn't put myself, in, I couldn't label myself as one thing and move this to the next area. Right. So you had to stay like a free agent, so to speak. 
You a freelancer. Yeah, kind of like a free agent. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was like I couldn't. I couldn't. And not only was I not going to incriminate myself, but I would have been punching my clock early. You know, and I, and I lost a lot of friends growing up to to gang violence and uh, getting caught up and becoming something that, that they didn't have to become. You know. Sorry to hear that too, man. Same yeah, thing on uh, this side. We we just don't have the gangs in Philly, but it's it's definitely like that over here, though. So I definitely yeah, it's, understand. It's I, definitely I came up the same way. I was an army brat, uh, so I moved around a lot. Like I'm used to making new friends, meeting new people in, in different places. So I, I I understand that type of uh, way of living. I was real nomadic when I was young too. Almost well, definitely, man. And uh, like I I tell people, man, a lot of people really don't know. Like for for and it, and it sucks because. A lot of kids growing up have PTSD. Don't even know it. Growing up, growing up in these inner cities, I mean, I'm, I, I take it to like, okay, the first time I seen someone lose their life, I was, I was 11 years old, you know, and you know, no, no 11 year old should have to see anything, things like in that matter, you know, and I just, I just take it that I had uh, a strong mom, you know, because there were so many times I could have went off on the deep end and, and things. I was blessed in so many different ways, you know? Man, shout out to Miss Jones, man. <laughs> so, Dayton, um, growing up and uh, transitioning from Compton to UCLA to the NFL, how was that transition for you, personally? Well, for, for me, it, it, I take it to, okay, when I first got to college, I didn't even know how to use a computer, you know? Like, I did not know how to use a computer, and that's, like, that's my time period of, you know, I, I'm like a kind of like in that I fit that millennial bill where the, you know I, I watched the internet come come up and you know when me going to UCLA from Compton High School not knowing how to use a computer was like wow like I didn't even know how to type when I went to college I was just like how how you know how can how can I go from Compton to UCLA don't know how to type these things so. Uh, it was, it was tough, and I think it made I think me going to UCLA challenged me. Uh, it, it challenged me all the way around as a man. Mm. It challenged me. Um, it challenged my intellect. It made me really buckle down and like really dial into uh, understanding the way of UCLA. And I was uh, going to a research based university and having to actually put in work right. for your degree. You know what I'm saying? It really, it really, it really humbled me. You know, like actually going to college and not just any college, uh, the most applied to university in the nation. Wow. And it, it, and it really challenged me to like really buckle down and really focus on, okay, I'm not just a football player. This, this, this is real life. I can really fell out of here. They're not just going to pass you here. It, it really, it really made me buckle down. And not only did I want to be a good student, but I want to be a great athlete. And I, I, I take it that the John Wooden way, uh, passed through me and, um, made me uh, who I am today. I mean, it made me who I was as an athlete at UCLA, and I was uh, a first-round a first round uh, all-conference yeah. athlete, you know? 26th overall, actually. Right? Yeah. So how are your years with the Green Bay Packers and Mike McCarthy? You, you said, what is that? How are your years with uh, the Green Bay Packers and Mike McCarthy? You know what? Uh, I actually loved it. I actually loved Mike McCarthy. Uh, I feel like his system was really – he had a really strong, I feel like he had a really great, strong system. Uh, I can say one thing, uh, just playing uh, on the Packers, I just felt like, you know, uh, having Aaron Rodgers, I think the, the biggest thing that we all uh, took for granted was having a guy like Aaron Rodgers because the thing, like, everybody's talking about the, the Aaron Rodgers, Mike McCarthy breakup. And I was just like, you know, I was telling everybody, I was like, man, you got to think, you know, Mike McCarthy won the Super Bowl. They went to the playoffs for I think eight, eight or nine years straight, and then the run ended and whatever happened. But I was just like, I felt like you know, playing with, with Mike McCarthy and Aaron Rodgers, I felt like we went into every game knowing that we were going to win. You know, that was the vibe over there. You know, so I felt like, <laughs> you know, having having two great people that came together, right? It kind of. It kind of spoiled it for everybody. Not spoiled it for everybody else, but I was going to say, I don't want to use that word. <laughs> they, set the, they set the bar real high, so to speak. Though. Yeah, it set the bar a little high for a lot of other guys who didn't meet those expectations, like saying that if Aaron wasn't going to be, if Aaron wasn't on the field, who was really going to come out and really ball if Aaron wasn't on the field? You know what I'm saying? Right. And I, I think that's what really, I think that's what bit them in the butt. 
you know, you got to think Aaron Rodgers broke his collarbone over there and everything went, everything went t- topsy turvy, you know? So you think injury kind of toppled that, that regime over there pretty much? Uh, most definitely. It, de- it definitely did. It definitely did. And uh, I, I really feel like, you know, you cut the head off the snake, the, the rest of the, uh, the body dies. You know, you start seeing, uh, you know, you know what they say when you put on like guys, uh, like our practice warriors, but right. then when they put on pads, you, you see like really everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's like a, I'm, I'm a boxing trainer, so in, in boxing we say everybody got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. You find out what they really made of. Then yeah, the same exact thing. So same same exact thing. So pretty much we had we had a quarterback who could who could lead, who could pretty much win games and. You know, got, I feel like a lot of guys relax the days ago, you know what I mean? Uh, for me looking on it on the outside, and that's what that's what derailed that you, regime you played, over there. You played with some beasts over there, too. You played with Julius Peppers. You played with Julius uh, Peppers, played Clay Matthews. Matthews. Uh, guys like Mike Neal, Mike Daniels, yeah. B.J. Rocky. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot, a, lot of, a lot of great guys. Ha Ha Quinn Dix. Uh, I, mean, I could go, the, the list goes on. Sam Shields. We, we had a uh, AJ Hawk wow. and Blake Martinez now. Yeah. I mean, it's just yeah. so many, so many different so guys many names, that yeah. got over there, you know. And for me, uh, for me, uh, and that's that's that was another thing, you know. For me, I was a rotational guy behind Julius Peppers, right? You know, uh, I think uh, that's what a lot of people really don't know. I think that's what kind of slowed my regime down was me and Julius kind of playing like the same position, right? And, and, that's him actually coming coming into Green Bay in my second year, and me me and him actually leaving Green Bay the same exact year, you know. Right. So, you know that's you know that's what I was competing against and competing with. Not only that was uh, Nick Perry, and not only that was the Clay Matthews and the uh, Mike Neal. You feel know what I'm saying? So, it but, was. Uh, but with all that, with all that, man, um, you still flash on on film without a doubt, regardless of who you were playing next to. So. You know, hats off to you for that, for sure, man. Yeah. Oh, most definitely. Most yeah, definitely. You flash on film like crazy. Like, I never, I, other than maybe Peppers and, uh, you know, Javon Kurtz, those types of guys. Uh, not even Kurtz, because Kurtz was usually an edge rusher. Yeah. I haven't seen a guy go three tech, one tech, you know, uh, right in, left in, right outside linebacker, three, four defensive. And I haven't seen anybody in, in, in the history of the league do that. Oh my gosh! And you know what? I take it to my first. Uh, I take that to my first defensive line coach I ever had, and it was Mike Kirkovac, and he told me it was just like, you know, when you're playing with so many different great rushers, you got to learn to rush from everywhere, and you know, pretty much everybody gets the same blocks. You just gotta you know how to beat him. He's like, you're big and strong enough to play up and down the line, so why not use why not use your ability to go attack guys and win? So. Uh, that's what I started doing. Uh, I started watching. I start every day. I start watching how Julius used to rush, and he just never had one position. He he lined up everywhere just to make. Sometimes even set other other rushers up, even get a sack. You know, right? right. That's that's why I'm as a player. It's like okay, if I want to go on the field, I can play wherever you need me to play, and I can be productive wherever you need me to be productive at. And uh, I feel like I had found the right system, the last system I was just saying, you know? The Cowboys, man. Shout out to my Cowboys. Our Cowboys, should I say. Um, Go Birds! With, with that said, right, if 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 it were a, um, let's just say, for sake of like Pro Bowls or anything like that, which position do you like playing the most? Or do you feel like you would be most effective at if you were, if you were asked to play one position, which one would it be? So honestly, uh, if I was asked to really, 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 really play one, like if I could really play one position, I mean, I'd probably be just a traditional three, three tech uh, defensive tackle. Um, I say like right. I mean, if I had to be real right now in my career, I'd probably be like a realistic three, three tech defensive tackle. Mm. My, my my real true strong point, my real true strong point is uh, on base downs. I am uh, a seven technique. Uh, run stopping defensive end, and then on third down, I am a three tech, true defensive defensive tackle while I rush on the inside. You know. Understood. Understood. And that's and that's 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 where my my skill set is stopping the run, 
Uh, he was seeing the tackles on first, second down, being uh, being uh, dynamic, and then on third down, being able to come in, even, even if I don't get a sack, being able to come down at least get a quarterback hit or some type of disruption. So you 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 can't wait to get back with the Cowboys and Rob Marinelli, right? Oh yeah, most definitely. I'm 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 trying to I'm trying to I'm I'm waiting on them right now. How how's that looking? How do you? I mean, I know you can't say too much because you don't want to tip your hat. You're still a free agent, but you know how's how's that? Uh, be, how's the free agency market looking right now for you? Well, <clears throat> well, free agency works out. You know, pretty much it's a tampering period before it even starts. There's there's what's called a tampering period before it actually starts, and uh, that's you can pretty pretty much uh, make a make a deal with uh, I guess to restrict the guys or you know you can talk to the guys that you're gonna tag you know right. and. That's the way it worked, but you know, there's there's waves to where you gotta pretty much get your priority guys first. Right. Pretty much you gotta get your priority guys first, and then after your priority guys, it's the next wave of the guys. You you, you pretty much can either go into the draft, mm-hmm. or you can bring back some veteran guys probably to your team. Right. And uh, I'm probably gonna fall into that veteran category, but at the same time, if the Cowboys is not the right, you know, if the Cowboys is not home, then it's time for me. I gotta find a, the next fit. That's gonna fit me best, you know. Oh, I understand that, man. Uh, you, you might, you might. Uh, well, well, we'll talk about the the, the the prognosis with the Cowboys as well. But uh, I know Clay Matthews is over in LA with you now, so you might reunite with him over over with the Rams. They need some uh, some linemen too. But uh, I'd rather you stay here with us, man. To be honest with you, the, the, oh, most the, definitely. I mean, just the chemistry, the chemistry in our defensive line room uh, is, is magical, man. We got some great guys in our defensive line room there. Oh yeah. And, Man, just 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 across the board, man. We're all we all compete. The, the, the crazy part is we all compete. Uh, we're all like brothers, man. We, we go to D line dinners every Thursday. It's oh, mandatory. We go to D line dinners. That's what's up. Uh, we do we do man builder, man builder with uh, Rob Marinelli on Saturdays, where it doesn't have anything to do with football. It's all it's all just talking about life and just how to become a better man. And you know what I mean? It's, it's little things like that that make that make you want to be a part of the culture, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's definitely a magical feeling being in here. That's that's, and, that's and, great to hear you say. That, sorry to cut you off if I cut you off. Um, but that's great to hear you say because in the media, you know, you hear all this, you know, the Cowboys locker room is, is you know, this or that. You know, the Cowboys locker room is in disarray or people, you know, think that's Jerry's world over there. But most players want to stay with the organization. So seeing that, that you say that, that you would prefer to – you know, hang in there with them too, and you, you love that environment. That's that's actually good to hear, and it's to the contrary of, of the negative negative aspect of what people try to push into the media about the Cowboys. So it's good. Oh to hear yeah, you man. I've I've only had I've only I've only got great things to say about uh, this organization, man. It's it's definitely a, a first class organization. It's definitely a organization that cares uh, about the people that work in. Not only do they care about the people that work in the organization. And I wholeheartedly believe that, you know, the powers that be it do anything for a lot of people in these in the, that's in this organization. And uh, I mean, it's, it's first class. I can't say too much more. It's yeah. just, you know, uh, yeah. it, it speaks for itself. And, and a lot of things that the media put out there, you don't really see. You know, yeah. you don't you don't see, you don't see all the good that uh, a lot uh, all the good that goes on around. You know. Understood, man. Understood. <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm going to make a major push this off season to bring uh, bring my man Dayton back and, and go get my man Dez too, man. Oh yeah, y'all man. Y'all two are the realest. Y'all two are the realest dudes. It's the, it's the bring back D Jones tour, man. Yeah, uh, let's get it. <laughs> let's bring get back it. D. Bring back D Jones tour. I mean, just, and, and, you know, and, and, I, I was pissed because I felt like, honestly, man. I was just like, man, like, you know, I felt like I was up to something special, and I felt like uh, it just got taken away from me. You know, I knew I was going to come back. I knew I'll, I'll be back. And right. And I just felt like it got just overall taken from me, and I couldn't uh, showcase my abilities, Man, you know, for for the fans, you know, because I mean, if you go back, even when I got to the team with four games, I mean, I only played, I got there with four games left in the season, and I played in three three of those games, and I started the last two, and it was, I was very productive in those games, I was very yeah. explosive in those games, and you I know, I felt like I, I showed what I could, what I can be, you know, so. Me coming into my next season, uh, I was I was more way I was way more comfortable than just being not having an off season and only being there for four games. You know, right? Yeah, I was at that last game, the, that uh, Eagles game on uh, New Year's Eve. I, I was at that game here in Philly. 
So yeah, I, I, I oh, saw yeah. that. I saw your sack against. Um, I think number seven. I forgot what his name was, but uh, I know you got a sack that game, and I remembered. I was like, "Well, who is this D-Tone Jones dude that keep busting up this?" Oh line? yeah, you was oh, yeah. you was wreaking havoc, man. So that that's yeah. when I originally start watching your film, and I was yeah. like, "Oh, this dude plays everywhere." For some reason, for some reason, I always do good against the Eagles. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Good. I, I, I Ju- that, Jules yeah. is an Eagles fan too. He's an Eagles fan. Okay. Totally so keep, like, keep kicking like, ass. I, I feel like everybody got a, got a team they just do good against. I just feel like yeah, I feel Dak, like I do Dak good played against good against the, against the Packers just, and y'all you played good against the Eagles, huh? You feel me? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Shout out to Dak right. Prescott too. Shout out to the the rest of the Cowboys. But um, definitely, man. What 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 are some of the um, some of the uh, crazier stories you have from uh, like locker room experiences and things like that? Not, not not anything crazy, crazy, but like funny stories or memorable moments from your experiences in the NFL thus far, both with Green Bay and and the Cowboys. Actually, oh man, dog, just oh man, things that you just... can tell. Don't get nobody in trouble. Oh my gosh, I. I it's not. It's not really stories. I wouldn't say any crazy stories. I just say uh, the things that people don't realize is just how funny the locker room is. Just like the characters that you come across, man. Just the, the things that grown men do that they can't do at home, but they can necessarily do it in the locker room. You feel what I'm saying? Right. It's, right. It's, <laughs> you know, it's like a safe, oh, a man. safe haven, man. I understand that, man. You know, can't can't really release too much. You know, no, no, I get you, man. You got you got to stay tight, lip about trying that. To, trying to turn me into D'Angelo Russell. Oh hell no, no, nah. <laughs> hell no. <nah>. Okay, <laughs> we wouldn't do that to you, can I, 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 We right. need you around. We don't, we don't need you doing nothing. Uh-huh. Don't hamper that. So that's why I said don't say, don't say nah, too much. Sister. We'll talk offline for that. That's all good. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, as far as as far as the the NFL landscape now, I know it's 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 not really applicable to a lineman because you don't really hit receivers, you don't have the pass interference issue. But you see, there's some yeah. rule changes now with pass interference and then the unnecessary. I'm just saying. Offense. I'm just saying if they're going if they're going to do that, then we need to be able to challenge for a, a hold, uh, a, a real vital hold at the end of the game. Oh yeah. I'm saying. I'm saying a guy. I'm talking about a guy got an offensive lineman beat, and it's a clear sack, and you just get held, but the, the, the ref does not call it. Right. But that, that changes the whole game. I mean, you think about if if Brandon Graham doesn't get doesn't sack Tom Brady. Tom Brady in might the Super Bowl. Go birds. What happens? Go birds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tom, Dr- you know, Tom Brady probably. If Brandon Graham the field. doesn't sack Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, I mean, they, they're walking down the field. Back. Scoring. That's true. <laughs> Shout yeah. out to Brandon Graham. <laughs> for sure. That's for sure. Super Bowl number seven for Tom. Oh yeah, that's crazy too, man. Shout out, shout out to the Patriots. Yeah. But um, like again, man, like we're we're not gonna hold you forever. What what I want to do though before we go, before we wrap, is like uh, because you you talked about your time at UCLA and, and the fact that you know you had to really buckle down and and, and kind of man up while you were there, right? Um, yeah. Outside of definitely. football, like what things, what what are your passions? What was your major first and, and what are your passions? So first outside off, of football? Uh, so first off, I majored in, uh, my major was uh, history. Uh, oh, well, ori- you were, originally, you I went to, I, I was, was a, a funny I was story. a minor in history myself. Okay. Okay. I see. So look at this funny story. I went into UCLA. I, w- I wanted to be an architect. That's, that's something I always wanted to do. I was like, just growing up in LA, I've always admired the skyline. I always liked buildings, you know, and but I always wanted to know how those buildings were built. So, Growing up, I always wanted to be an architect. So uh, get to UCLA, go through my first two years. I sit down in my counselor's office. I'm like, hey, you know, boom, what do you want to be? They told me, I said, sure, I want to be an architect. So we look into it. They like, they call the school, the architecture and design school. They're like, all right, these are the requirements. They're like, all right, you pretty much have to quit football if you want to be an architect. So I thought about it. I said, ah, it's I can't do that. Intensive workload. My, my friend's an architect. And so, uh, like I have a bunch of friends who went to architecture school. You feel me? I, so I looked into in what I qualified for, my other majors that I qualified for. <laughs> I said, all right. History it is. All right. I, I'm, history it is. And then I took a minor uh, with urban planning. Okay. So, uh, okay. So you I took a, a, I, mean, like I got my history. I, mean, I got my degree in history and a minor in urban planning. And then... Um, yeah, man, it's, it's been great ever since. I, I don't think I'm going to actually use my degree in history. I'm probably going to get into some type of real estate once I'm actually done smart playing. Smart man. That's actually ball. what I do, man. So you're uh, a smart man. On top, of, on top of that, I'm probably going to uh, do some type of uh, player engagement within the NFL. Understood. So instead of coaching, stay, uh, stay logged in with uh, player engagement. That's what I really want to do. I feel you on that. So like the uh, Players Association, stuff like that. Or, or, or the rookie symposium. Oh yeah, most definitely. 
Got you, got you. Well, yeah. we, we're not going to talk too much about after the NFL because you got a lot of time left, man. We're not going to Yeah, I got, I got at least seven more. That's my goal is 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you got time left, man. You, you still a young guy. Yeah, my, my, goal, my goal is at least 14. Well, let's get it. Let's get it and stay oh, with them Cowboys. Like, what, 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 what are your goals this season? Like, what, what do you think? Uh, I, I know if they do bring you back, it'll probably be on like a prove it type deal first. So, is your Most goal, is your goal to, to, to ball out and, and like stay with the Cowboys, or are you just looking for that 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 big uh, payday later on, regardless of where you go? Well, I'm I'm mad now, so shoot, I'm I'm I'm, I'm obsessed. I just want to I just want to prove it and be the best Dayton Jones I could possibly be. And just let let the dice fall wherever they fall because you know I just said you know, fourteen is the goal and I'm going into year seven. So next year if I got to prove it for that to cat start the, the catapult my career, then you know I'm, I'm excited to do that. You know I, I still have time. I, I see a lot of guys who just got signed. Like for instance, I got a guy on the board like a Marcus Hunt. You know he just got signed with the Indianapolis Colts. You know I was like looking at the age. I'm like all right. No, he still got three years older than me. We were in the same draft class, you know? Right. And uh I'm like, it's go time. You know, let me let me prove let me prove to these organizations that I can be a dog. That's and I, right. let me prove let me prove to you guys that I'm your guy. Let me show you, you know, and uh that's that's all I can say. Man, and, Jerry, bring and the rest this man will be history. back, man. Bring this man back. What 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 are, lastly, man, what what are you doing in the off season to stay ready, man? Oh, so man, every day, man, I've been, I've been standing on it. Uh, I've, recently, I've just taken up gymnastics. Uh, I don't know if you caught it on uh, Twitter where I posted where I was like doing the backflips and whatnot. Oh no, I'm going. I'm, I'm putting that in this video though. Now, watch. Yeah, <laughs> gonna be a clip of that. Come so I'm just, find I'm just taking up. Uh, I'm just taking up gymnastics. Uh, just gymnastics and Pilates. Just more like when my, just staying flexible. As you get older, you know, you lose a lot of flexibility. But for me, just staying fast, staying. Uh, Staying, staying flexible, but you know a lot of people do yoga. But for us, we're 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 athletes with muscle. We can't right. just stretch. You need some power behind. You, so I do Pilates too with right. that. You know, uh, right. I stay. I still do my MMA. I still I still fight every day in the off season. Oh, that's what's up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I still fight every Greg day. Hardy you know? style. Greg Hardy style. Greg Hardy and I keep my cardio up, but man. Uh, uh, you know, I don't want to reveal too much. You know, guys be stealing, stealing what I do oh, in yeah, the offseason. Yeah, Next thing, I'm going to look up. Yeah, don't give it I'm going to look up and see a guy doing what I do uh, on their Twitter and posting me yeah, getting ready for 2019. Man, what, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Whatever you're doing is working. Um, I, I can't wait to, you know, uh, uh, see you back on the field this offseason, I mean this season uh, as well. And then also, man, shout out to the Cowboys. Bring this man back, man. We need him back, and and he definitely all the uh, way. Appreciate that, that, man. Rotational player. Appreciate that, you for were, real. You and a just true uh, first round talent. Shoot, you gave man. Us follow, follow 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 my progression, and uh, man, stick stick with it. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take we're gonna take it to the top. We're gonna take over and go to the top with this one. How how do fans interact? You rather them interact with you on Twitter, or how how do you want the? Oh fans man, all the time, man. I'm I'm steady. I'm steady talking to fans on Twitter. I'm steady interacting. Uh, Drop. With people, uh, people see me, man. If you see me out there, come up, say hi. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a nice dude. I'm not a rude guy. So feel free to uh, tap in with me on Twitter. Um, I'm about to actually make an Instagram at the free agency just so people can get a deeper connection with me. Right. I really, I really didn't believe in Instagram or really social media at all. I was just yeah. using it for you know just the marketing. But... Use it strategically. Just don't put nothing incriminating. Dayton, there, what's your? What's oh, your... you already know. You already know. It. What's your uh, Twitter handle, Dayton, so we can have uh, everybody know it's, where to follow you? Is I is is I am underscore that underscore one, Got it. and that's yeah. I am Dayton. That's Understood. that's my name. That you one. Hear that, everybody? Follow Dayton Jones on Twitter right now. That's a hell of a name, a hell of a player too, man. Thanks, thanks, uh, Dayton. I, I got a newborn at uh, home too, thanks, so I Claire. understand. I let you get back to the family and all that, man. Tell tell the wife uh, we appreciate her allowing us to. To interview for this time and uh, holding you up, man. I appreciate that. But uh, we'll have All you back way, on, man. man. Appreciate uh, you guys, man. Definitely. Stay definitely, up, man. man. You too, Thanks bro. for the love. You too, And uh, let's get it. Yep, let's get it. We're going to put something together for you, man. Got you. All right, guys. That was Dayton Jones right here on the Akoye Media Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and our YouTube. Hit like and subscribe. Uh, there's plenty more where that came from, guys. All right, take it easy.